Hello and welcome. Today we're working in Excel on a one variable data table and a two variable data table. So let's get started. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills, including Excel. So let's do a couple little notes before we get into our first one variable data table. So a data table is just simply a what if table. And a lot of times when you build a table that's what if, you would use different formulas and use absolute addresses but but the advantage of a data table is you just can change one variable and it'll calculate everything on the data table you can change two variables and that'll be a two variable data table so let's do just a slight uh, bit of teaching here so on a variable costing income statement we have sales which would be the number of units times the price minus the variable cost, the, the number of units times the variable cost per unit would give us the contribution margin. We just simply subtract. And then our fixed cost, the total costs that don't change, we subtract that out and we get our profit. So let's say we have a one variable data table and we want to calculate for the Santiago Corp, we want to calculate the profit with different units. So we're going to build a table that has different units based on our given assumptions. The only thing we have at our very beginning level is these assumptions. So our unit sold is $7,500. We're going to sell at a price of $40 each. Our variable cost is $21 each. Our fixed cost total $147,000. Let's say that we're going to build a table starting with $5,250 and then go up every time by 250. So let's say our sales are 7,500. We assume we're going to start with 7,500 times the price per unit, which is $40. So that's total sales of 300,000. Our variable costs are going to be 7,500 units times the $21. Now watch, since I'm not having to copy it down, I don't have to use an absolute address. So 300,000 minus the 157,500 gives us 142,500. Our fixed costs just simply are 147,000. And we subtract 142,500 minus 147. So we're going to have a loss here, a little bit of a loss instead of a profit. So one thing that this what if table or a data table does for us is to let us figure out well how much do we need to sell to make a profit or we can adjust our cost a little bit our selling price just a little bit so as we set up our table we're going to leave the first one blank and we'll start right here so we're going to start with let's assume our beginning on this table is going to be 5250 and then we're going to take that 5,250 plus 250. Now I need to do an absolute here, so F4. So what if we sell 5,250? What if we sell 5,500? And let's keep going. So it's going to go up by 250 every time. 5,750, 6,000, so on. So all the way down. So what we can do is we can calculate this income statement at all these different levels. That's about 20 different uh, levels of sales from 5,250 all the way up to 10,000. Well, at the very top, here's what we need to do. We need to point to a formula. We need to point to the 300. The sales are 300. And our variable costs are 157,500. And our contribution margin is 142,500. We could do the math up there, but we already have math here, so we're just pointing to that. Our fixed costs are not going to be very interesting, but it's going to be 147,000 every time. And then our profit, we're going to point to the 4,500. All right, so here is our basic setup on our data table. Now, what we're going to do is highlight everything right here, including that first column and the heading row. If we go over to data, we'll do what if analysis and data table. Now, 
the data table, it doesn't have one variable data table and two variable data table. It just has room for two variables. So do we need to change the row or change the column input cell? Here's how you remember it. This that we're changing is in a column. So this is going to be the column input cell. These original numbers were built at 7,500. So instead of 7,500, replace that 7,500 with 5,250, with 5,500, with 5,750, and so on. Now watch what happens. It calculates at every level. So this level we calculated was 7,500. Let's look. I kind of made it in the middle of the table. Then that's 300,000, 157,500, 142,500, so on. Anything below our loss is getting bigger, and anything above the break-even point, our profit is getting bigger. Well, what is our break-even point? Our break-even point, I just uh, gave you the formula here, fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. So fixed cost is going to be 147,000 divided by, and we need to do the math of 40 minus 21, so that's going to be $19 each, right, is our contribution margin per unit. Each one we sell, we're making a $19 contribution margin. So therefore, our break-even point is something like 77, 38, 30, uh, 37, I guess. So, 77, 37. So it's in between these two levels right here. It's more than 7,500 and it's a little bit less than 7,750. So that's where our break even point, so that seems appropriate. Now, this at the very top is just kind of the sales to show how it works. But that's kind of confusing maybe, so, so sometimes I like to hide it, and here's how I'm going to hide it. I'm, I can't get rid of it because I need those numbers, but if I made those fonts, if I made them white, then they disappear, and it's, I think, an easier table to read. So what it means is, if our units are this, then our sales would be this, and our profit would be so on. So this is a one variable data table, and that's how you do it. Now. It is dynamic. What if we change our price? Our price is $42 rather than $40. Watch the table. Everything gets updated and our break-even point goes down to $7,000. It was $72.70 or whatever it was. $77.37 rather. But just changing our price by two. So what if we reduce our variable cost by two down to 19 Well. That's the same net effect because we now have a $21 contribution margin. We can change the fixed cost. What if the fixed cost uh, grow to $150,000? Well, then it changes our break-even point. What if we can cut our fixed cost down to $140,000? Well, that reduces our break-even point from the original number. So let's go back to our original numbers. So this is a dynamic one variable data table. Now let's do the two variable data table. Now on the two variable data table, I'm going to set up a little problem where we have a, a loan, like a home loan. So let's say the price of a house is $500,000 and the loan uh, down payment is going to be 50000 So the loan is actually going to be 500 minus the 50000 450000 Let's assume a 6% annual rate. So that's our monthly rate is going to be 6% divided by 12, right? So it's a half percent per month. Let's assume 30 years. And so the number of months is going to be 30 times 12. And the monthly payment then, this is the payment function from time value of money. So let's look up payment, PMT. So the rate is going to be the periodic rate. You need to take that 6% divided by 12. Or since I actually did the periodic rate, you can just point to that. The number of periods is going to be 360. The present value is going to be 450,000. The future value will be zero. We've borrowed 450,000. We're going to pay it off where the balance is zero. 
and then the uh, periods uh, payment happens at the end of the period so it's going to be a zero this is going to be a negative 2697 I'm going to make this negative to make it a positive monthly payment all right so let's do a data table that says what if we start with a 10-year loan and it goes up 12 months or so a 10-year 11-year 12-year so on and let's start the annual interest rate at 3% and the annual increment at 1%. So one thing we need to do on this two variable data table, we're going to point to our monthly payment. We'll have a monthly payment here and we're going to start with 120 months and then we'll do 120 plus 12 and need to make that an absolute address by doing F4 so this would be a 10-year loan, 11-year loan, so on. And I think I've built it where it goes exactly to 360 months. Okay. So this would be a 10-year loan. This would be a 20-year loan. This would be a 30-year loan. Now, what we're going to do is the second uh, variable that we're going to change is the interest rate. So let's start at 3% and let's increase it by one. So um, the 3% plus one and making an absolute address here. So that's 4%, 5%, and 6% should be what we have. So we're going to figure out just the monthly payment. If it's a 10 year or 20 year or 30 years and all the years in between. And if it's 3%, 4%, 5%, and 6%. All right, so we need to highlight everything. We're going to do a data table for two variables. So this is, go to the data ribbon, the what if analysis. This is a data table. Now for the row, what did we use? The row we used 6% and the column is going to be the 120 uh, months. We did um, 360 months. So we calculated this based on 6% and 360 months. So here is our data table. Let me make it a little bit wider so we can see the numbers here. So if we had a 30 year loan and it was at 6%, it's 2697 and 98 cents. But if the rates were down to 3%, the monthly payment is 1897 you say well hey that's way too much for the uh, down payment uh, for the house so let's say it's a three hundred thousand dollar house and you make a payment of thirty thousand on down payment well here it's all calculated um, at, on a monthly basis you say hey six percent is too high let's do it at five and a quarter percent well there you go it doesn't change if it's at three four and five percent you could say, I need to start at 3%, but then we ought to go up by a half percent every time. Not 50%, so 0.5%, um, half percent. So if it goes from 3 to 3.5, 4, 4.5. Four you could do the same thing. You could say 0.25. But what if it goes up a quarter percent? Well, now you have 3%, 3 and a quarter, 3 and a half, and 3.75. So that might be a more realistic in a particular situation. Now, one thing you can do, this payment uh, might be confusing for you, so one thing I would do is I would hide that and make that a white font where you don't see that anymore, and so you certainly can see, hey, here's what happens to our, our um, payment if we do 30 years and the rates go up on us a little bit. It would go from 1138 all the way up to 1250. If we did it over 20 years, or even 15, this would be a 15-year loan, then you'd pay 1864 or up to 1963 per month. So that's how you do a one-variable data table and a two-variable data table. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.